Welcome. This is uh, lecture number three on um, game theory and vaccination. And we um, continue um, using the reference uh, from this article, article in 2004. So what we're going to do now is that we have to revisit some definitions. Uh, some of these definitions uh, are uh, things we had learned before. Um, but we want to bring them now into the context uh, that, um, you know, into this context of vaccination. Um, one one um, thing to remind, to remember, uh, is that um, you could think of some of these vaccination games as theoretical games. Perhaps the easiest uh, analogy would be to think of a theoretical game with pure strategies. So here's where you want to refresh your memory. When we first learn about games, the first games uh, we learn uh, were things like Prisoner's Dilemma, where um, we define very clearly um, there was a discrete set of strategies, two strategies, say cooperation and defection, and then there were payoffs as to what each player would obtain by playing the one strategy against the next and so on. Uh, but the next level uh, of concepts that we learned in game theory was something that had to do with uh, mix strategies. And these uh, strategies called mix uh, involve uh, probabilities and they're no longer a discrete set of, uh, you know, strategies to play, but rather they're a continuum uh, because they have to do uh, they're associated with a probability. Uh, so that's precisely what is uh, being in use here. Um, so you're going to see that uh, there's an interplay with mixed strategies. Uh, in fact, we have uh, derived an expression for a probability, pi sub p, and we're, um, before we start throwing more expressions, um, what we'll do next is to review some of these definitions. So here are some of the assumptions that we have in this uh, formulation or this methodology. Uh, we assume that we have a population of people uh, which all have um, access to the same information and they use uh, this information in the same way to evaluate or assess the risks that they have. Um, the strategy, and this should immediately ring bells in your mind, in your brain, about mix. What we had learned, we have, what we had previously learned about mixed strategies. Okay, so the strategy of an individual is the probability Q that this individual will choose to vaccinate. Okay, so strategy is a probability; it's a mixed strategy. The vaccine uptake level in the population is the proportion P of newborns who will be vaccinated. Okay, you may remember uh, a proportion P going into the R compartment in the SIR. And therefore, um, this is the mean of all strategies adopted by individuals in the population. Okay, so, <clears throat> so, uh, you may remember that um, what we had previously um, discussed with the SIR equations um, had a um, the following description. The original SIR model uh, had three compartments, S, I, and R. Okay. Uh, a key feature of the model is that we had a proportion of individuals, uh, basically the newborns were split between uh, individuals that went directly into the R compartment because it is assumed the R compartment is a compartment uh, of individuals that the, the compartment that houses individuals that have permanent immunity. In other words, they have protection for life against that infection. And so see this assumption here of proportion P of newborns that means that those that come here are P times new. That's what we had. Um, and then um, those um, that went directly into the S compartment are 1 minus P. So you would multiply 1 minus P times mu. And so <clears throat> basically the mu, the rate mu was splitted into 1 minus P and P. Okay. And this 
P mu going into R means the newborns that R I assume um, to have um, immunization or protection okay and um, the rest of those newborns are assumed to be born susceptible to the infection right and so all those individuals in the S compartment are not vaccinated okay The other assumption is that we ignore any delay between changes in the vaccine uptake and other changes in the vaccine coverage in the population. If uh, no disease related or vaccine related mortality takes place, then the proportion of the population that is vaccinated, in this case uh, lowercase p, is going to be equal, it's going to match the vaccine uptake level. This is one of the main assumptions. Morbidity is um, it's a probability and is defined as a probability of negative consequence, consequences or adverse consequences due to infection. So it is assumed that the payoff uh, to an individual will be greater uh, when the morbidity risk is lower. And we're going to use a notation R uh, to denote the risk uh, of morbidity, the morbidity risk from vaccination. So we have a morbidity risk from vaccination and also a morbidity risk from infection. So R sub V denotes the risk, um, the morbidity risk from vaccination, and R sub I denotes the morbidity risk from infection. Uh, th this is to a good point to point, uh, this is a good uh, moment, a good time to point out that vaccines are the result of science and they are well intentioned and there is a, a whole, uh, there is a lot of science and engineering that goes into the development, the design, development, deployment of vaccinations and immunizations. But vaccinations are not perfect. Um, that's why this whole context of probabilities um, and, and so on and game theory is something that applies very well. They are not perfect. Um, they, uh, in fact, may have side effects that are quite severe and in some cases uh, due not only to side effects but due to other uh, conditions or um, due to other things in the profile of a patient um, compromise immune systems due to for example chemotherapy or something of that sort uh, then there are instances in which you know one has to really weigh uh, these morbidity risks of one versus the other the, the versus from vaccination versus uh, the risk from infection. Okay, so let's just keep that in mind. Now, <clears throat> we had previously derived an expression for the probability of infection pi sub p. Okay, and to uh, remind ourselves, this is the probability that an vaccinated uh, person will eventually become infected given a coverage at a level P. So the payoff to an unvaccinated person is negative R sub I pi sub P. Okay? And uh, the payoff to a vaccinated individual is equal to negative R sub V. The strategy of vaccinating with probability Q has then expected payoff. Okay, uh, this is it's an expected payoff that involves um, the expressions that we had previously mentioned. It involves um, this expression and that expression, right? And is uh, something is a weighted sum where the weights of this sum are given by um, 
they're given by Q and they're uh, also weighted by 1 minus Q respectively. So the theoretical game is not affected if the payoff function is rescaled and what we're going to do now is to actually factor a term out of this expression so we consider um, that expected payoff and now we're going to factor r sub i okay we're going to write r sub i here as a common factor and that has the immediate effect of uh, having a coefficient for the weight q r sub v over r sub i minus um, pi sub p you will see in a minute why that is so what we do is that now we set a new parameter uh, we set a new parameter here r which is the ratio of r sub v over r sub um, i and we redefine the expected value as um, uh, you, what you can see here is that you could take this quantity okay um, you could divide in both sides here by r sub i okay you can divide here by r sub i and if we do that, if we divide by r sub i, then we get that um, we can write this whole thing in terms of r q minus pi sub p times 1 minus q, which is precisely what, um, what we have here. So... <clears throat> If two players, um, this is a good time also to refresh our memory with uh, Nash um, equilibrium points. So if two players play a strategy that is a Nash equilibrium, then neither of them can deviate from this strategy and, uh, and therefore increase, they cannot increase their payoff. This concept of an equilibrium is such if that if the players choose strategies that are best responses to each other then no other player has an intent incentive to deviate to another strategy okay let me adjust this so this idea of being at an equilibrium in game theory is that um, a game is at a state of equilibrium um, when uh, these players, if the players choose strategies that are best responses to each other, uh, we would then say the game is at an equilibrium because there is no force pushing the game toward uh, towards a different outcome. Okay, so um, this uh, concludes our um, review of some of the assumptions and some of the uh, concepts uh, that we need for. Uh, the game theory and vaccination uh, discussions. So uh, we will continue this on the lecture number four.